Not too long ago, the Young Turks had uh, taken off their silence. They had broken their silence, is a better way to put it, on former Young Turks host Dave Rubin, because Dave Rubin used to be a Young Turks host, and then he turns around and becomes this libertarian guy, classical liberal, trying to mumble-jumble political terms and political ideologies, and it's a pretty, you know, pretty weird guy altogether, but, uh, you know, he's all about talking about good ideas, free exchange of ideas, except for all the people that he blocks on Twitter, or doesn't allow Sam Cedar to come on his show, you know, all of that kind of stuff. Now, Anna Kasparian was really good friends with Dave Rubin while they were at the Young Turks, and you can go back and see, like, all of the different videos that they had together, you can see tweets where Dave Rubin is, like, adding Anna Kasparian, they're like, oh, you know, they were insane, they were very friendly, um, and so, you know, the type of stuff that Anna talks about is pretty damn interesting, because it gives us a, an unseen insight of Dave Rubin that, you know, we wouldn't be able to no, really, you know, we wouldn't really know because we don't know that. We don't know, like, all that much shit about Dave Rubin, you know what I mean? But this is pretty interesting. Anna Kasparian, this is going to be sort of a long clip. Anna Kasparian did, uh, she went, she was a guest on the Michael Brooks show. He has his own show um, on Patreon. He has a Patreon show. He's got a new YouTube channel as well. So check this out needed to come out and hit back. So maybe you could maybe just start by talking about that process specifically. Yeah. So the thing about Dave Rubin that I think a lot of people who don't know him personally don't understand is that regardless of what you think about how shady he is or how, you know, unintelligent he is, he's yes, a charming yes. guy. Oh. He's a very charming guy. And so when he started working at TYT, first off, um, he and uh, his now husband, uh, David Janet, were pretty persistent. So at that time, we were at Current TV, and we were just starting to get some positive recognition, and it was a good feeling. And so Dave Rubin moves out to L.A. from New York. You know, it was very clear that he needed a stable job, and he just kept telling me over and over again, oh, I, would, I would just really love to work with you guys. I just feel like what you guys are doing is so smart. You know, you guys are really cutting edge. I, I love the ideology. I love the fearness. Like, uh, it, it was just one compliment after the other. And I got to be honest, I, I was an idiot at that moment because I believed him and I genuinely thought, like, this is a good dude. And I, I want to be close to him. You know, like mm -hmm. he would invite me to dinner all the time and I would go as often as I could. And we really did develop what I thought was a genuine friendship. And I remember one year, um, you know, I threw a little birthday party for him and yeah, I introduced him to all my friends and I'm not making this stuff up. Like if you go to my personal YouTube channel, there's literally a video there where we're celebrating the holidays together with my close friends. Um, so anyway, he always had, so he starts working with us mm -hmm. and I noticed that like every conversation we had was about pay. And look, I, I get it because working at a, an independent news organization, like you're not going to make a ton of money, right. right? Like you see the salaries that people at CNN are making or MSNBC. And, you know, he was really aspiring to that. Mm -hmm. And I just let him know, you know, and made it abundantly clear. It's very unlikely that any of us are going to get paid millions of dollars. And he was doing this 30 minute a week show, which I thought was fine. It didn't seem to me that he really cared too much about politics. Right. Um, the person behind that show who really made it happen was his husband, who, like, I love that guy. I mean, I haven't talked to him. I'm sure he doesn't have great thoughts about me, but he was a very hard worker. He was very smart, and he was just super ambitious. And so he would put together these 30-minute shows for Dave Rubin, and then he would have all these notes uh, on a one sheet for him, and then he would come in literally do a 30 minute show It was a panel show so i mean you just ask a few questions in that you know format right. and then he would get upset that that jank wasn't paying him you know at least 150 grand for that once a week 30 minute show now if you think you can make money somewhere else do you like i didn't have a problem with him leaving and when he left we were all on really good terms we were still good friends right you know uh jank had like a sending off video with dave rubin and they're very friendly with one another because, again, they were on very good terms. 
And then out of nowhere, he goes on um, Rogan's program and he just starts shitting on us. Mm -hmm. And I had no idea why. And it was, it was really hurtful. So I, me I messaged him. I sent him a text message. And I was like, Dave, what's going on? And he's like, no, 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 I'm not attacking you. I'm attacking Jenk. And I was like, but <laughs> first of all, you're attacking the Young Turks. I'm the, like one of the main hosts of the Young Turks. I think even like, people that know nothing about the Young Turks would say, like, or very little would say Jenk and then Anna. Like, you are the definitely one of the two most identifiable people with that brand. Yeah, I've been there for 11 years. Yeah. I've been, you know, hosting the main show for 11 years with Jenk. So when you say the Young Turks, that includes me. So, and, and even if he was just attacking Jenk, it didn't make any sense. Jenk bent over backwards for that guy. Right. So let me give you an example. When he left, Dave Rubin wanted 100% ownership of his YouTube channel. Now, mind you, it was TYT's producers, TYT's editors, TYT's studio, like that content, legally speaking, easily belonged to TYT. But right. Jake was like, you know what? I, no, I'm not going to be a dick. I'm going to let him keep 100% ownership of his channel. And any revenue that he earns, he can keep it. Like we're not going to try to, you know, take a cut or a percentage of that. And I thought that was really big of Jake. And there were also numerous occasions where he said something stupid on the main show while he was a panelist. And then later would run to Jank and beg Jank to cut that out of the video. And right. Jank would do it because he didn't want Dave Rubin to be harassed by audience members or whatever it is. And so it's just amazing to me that Jank bent over backwards for this guy over and over again. And then he turned around and just started trashing us. Do you think so? I mean, because that's an interesting, like, there's this bigger ecosystem that he fits into. And he just kind of, you know, he's like, the easiest interview on the planet for any type mm -hmm. of right wing rebranded old ideas repackaged as I mean, it is pretty funny that they call it the intellectual dark web, right? Like let's let's literally self identify as like the secret part of the internet where you buy organs and child porn. Yeah, I mean I think that branding wise that was probably a bad idea. <laughs> and I get where they were trying to come from, you know, right. we're hip, we're we're edgy, we're like we're very naughty for having these beliefs. But the re the fact of the matter is, I mean, look, I think that Dave Rubin shouldn't be in the same group as these guys because even if you disagree with what, you know, you know, Peterson has to say or Harris has to say, I don't deny that they're smart guys. Like, I disagree with them vehemently on, on some things. Um, Peterson more than Harris. But I, I think that they're at least intellectual. Yeah, so after listening to that and also knowing what Kyle Kalinske said about saying how Dave Rubin had told, you know, he, he Kyle Kalinske essentially dubbed Dave Rubin a careerist, basically meaning he was just going to, he sort of, it's not really that he gives a fuck much about politics, but rather, I want to get the most money, the most fame, and just the most perspective when it comes to money, fame, etc., etc. And so, it wasn't really anything about politics. He didn't really care about the policies or political positions or principle, because Dave Rubin has no principles. And so I think, you know, corroborating that with Anna's, you know, in-depth story that she talks about how, you know, Dave Rubin wanted this massive pay for a 30-minute-a-week show. Um, and people are acting like, oh, like, well, then it was good for him to change. And it's like, then you're not talking about principles anymore. That was, of course, Dave Rubin's supporters. But uh, then you don't have any principles and it has nothing to do with politics you simply got in it for the money, which is pretty fucking unethical because essentially what you're saying is I don't really give a fuck about what I'm talking about. I'm not being an honest actor. I'm just lying. Uh, I also did a segment where because um, uh, Vadim Nuku sent me a clip, you know, he sent me a clip of Dave Rubin back uh, when he was a host of the Young Turks saying, well, when has self-regulation ever worked? Doesn't it fail, you know, on, on its face every time? And so, and then, you know, you have him going on Joe Rogan saying intellectually, I like that, you know, I like that uh, idea, which is, you know, is pretty funny. But the point here being is that it's very clear, and this is because this is a question that I've had, uh, I, I asked, I, you know, 
did did Dave Rubin really was Dave Rubin really a progressive when it came down to the issues? Because I personally, personally, I think no, he wasn't. I don't think he was. I think he was just doing it for the money. I think he's just an opportunist who was going to take whatever political ideology he had to spew. I think he was just going to spew that just to be able to make money, to be able to get in a more secure position, and to be more popular, etc., etc., etc. And so I don't think that Dave Rubin actually changes ideas organically, as in like he was legitimately a progressive and then switched his positions over to the right and everything else just kind of followed through. No, I don't I don't buy that. I don't believe that. I don't agree with that. I think that that is just completely wrong. What I think is He's an opportunist. He saw an opportunity of, hey, whoa, look at all this Patreon do- all these Patreon dollars, all this Coke money that I could get, insane amounts of, you know, popularity that I can get a- as of right now if I switch to right-wing ideology. And so that's what he did. He never really was a progressive, truly. He didn't really have any principles. He was just saying what he could say to be able to get himself a position. That was what it was, and money, and that's what I think, and I... I think that what Anna Anna says and corroborating that with what Kyle says, you know, I think that it's just, it's pretty much indisputable at this point. 